random hook. Random hook. Random encounter. Hey, let's shake things up a bit and get random with our adventure design. Uh, in this video, I'm going to discuss my experiences and methods for designing a dungeon. This is the third video of the series on adventure design that I'm doing. I'll have a link to the full playlist down in the description below. In this video, I will be discussing how to use some randomness. You know, it helps keep everybody guessing in that new campaign if you have some randomness. I did briefly touch on randomness in the Railroad video, but let's dig into it a little bit here. First things first, I have read a fair amount of thoughts that a random dungeon and scenario makes no sense. You know, that everything needs to be thought out and balanced, so, you know, nobody gets hurt. At least not seriously. That thinking is flawed, because it is so phony. In the real world, random events that, the, that you and I have no control over happen all the time. Nobody can control and predict everything about their lives any more than your villains or the PCs can. I don't like railroads when I play. To me, removing randomness is just another form of railroading because you want to tie down these players, these characters, to a specific plot. Uh, some structure's good, don't get me wrong, structure's good. The last few videos, we've been kind of plotting out and designing and developing things. So, but, what I like to do is create my random tables before the game starts. That way I polish it a bit. I have already agreed and bought into anything on the table because I created it. Or if it's a published adventure, I've approved the random um, items that we're going to go with. You know, I don't like to plan for future random encounters that may or may not ever happen, but in the big broad terms, yes. But I, I like to focus on the current randomness, the current random tables is what I'm looking at. So, in the adventure you're planning for the next game session, by all means, have the end of that particular adventure session, pencil it out. Be prepared to make adjustments based on the players, though and be prepared to make changes for better ideas. Your players are going to have amazing ideas that you never thought of. Roll with it. That is being random. Um, try to have about three routes to take. Let your players choose the path. Don't give them too many options, of course, it will overwhelm them if you get that uh, paralysis thing going on. But by the end of the gaming session, make sure that you know what your players think they're going to do next time you play. You know, write it down and come up with about three new possible avenues and do the same, or even less planning than you did for this session, because let's remember, we already have two unexplored avenues that we could potentially be reusing. So, and if it's been a while, if it's, you've had a few adventures, you might have several of those that you can just grab and, and run with. So it's not like you have to create three every time, you just have to pick two that you've already created and create a third one, or just create, or just pick three that you've already created. Uh, to be clear, I don't think the GM should be slave to the dice. You need to use randomness where it makes sense, and use randomness that you already agree with. When you create those random tables, you agree with that randomness before you roll the dice once. You should have some structured events that will happen. Not everything can be on the fly or off the cuff. You need to plan your important things. In the Railroad video, I said to have a bullet point list of things that happen. You know, keep adding to that as you play. Put it on an index card or a Google Doc, however you, that you work so you don't lose that. In our ongoing example, let's say that our villain Keith, he took over a fortress that was once controlled by a wizard group. Um, unless it was a very small fortress, he probably doesn't have complete control of it yet. So there'll be some random elements there. Uh, if there's a dungeon underneath of it, what about civilian populations? Does he, does he know about the magic portals? Are there magic portals? Did he find the hidden gold behind the ugly landscape painting? 
you know, did the Wizards even know that was there? What's the backstory there if the players start digging into it? I would likely plan and stock points of interest if the PCs were to say they were planning to get into the fortress somehow, but I wouldn't stock every nook and cranny. Instead, I would create a random table of both monsters they might encounter and events that might happen based on the campaign so far. Monsters would, of course, include any of Keith's minions, but might also include some purely random elements. There could be encounters from inside the fortress or leading up to it. You know, you're going to want to develop your own table of pre-approved randomness, so I keep saying that, that pre-approved random table. Uh, you start with a list of about 20 and just fill in what you're sure would be in the fortress, and next fill in things that might be there. You know, and finally, throw in a couple of weird or funny things that just might not be explainable. In the TV show Lost, there was a polar bear and shark on the island. Why? You know, I saw the whole series. The reason it, just, it never made was completely clear or was it made complete sense why they had these creatures there. There was always an air of mystery about it. You don't have to explain why a pack of zombies are roaming the hallway. It's up to your PCs to figure it out. And if they press you, just shrug and say something a bit mysterious like, You haven't figured that out yet? Hmm. Then get your evil GM smile and roll some dice behind your screen if they... <laughs> if they really start to focus on the random plot elements. Make some notes and figure something out be between the sessions. Obviously, they're interested, so roll with it. Do you ever randomly roll to see what your players' reactions are to the roll? Ever just pull out a random encounter or just do the roll, frown, and move on? You know, you didn't really do anything. You just did that kind of, kind of, uh, trying to psych them out type of deal. I guess my point here is that adventures are messy. Be minimalistic and don't worry too much about making sure everything makes sense. Now, of course, you'll want to avoid something just plain silly. No, the dragon doesn't fit in the 10-foot room that has no means of exit, but maybe the room does have an exit. Remember those magic portals? Maybe there's one in this room, and only the dragon can activate it. You know, the dragon is the guardian. Maybe you have to bargain with the dragon to open that portal so you can get to the next level of the dungeon. And yes, I just made all that up right now. Hey, and maybe killing the dragon? There's no way to open the portal. Or there's some really new complicated way. So, even if you do screw up and have something that, something that doesn't make sense, and the player says, Hey, if green slime is growing here, how does Keith manage to walk through here? Then just come up with a reason right there and then. After all, who says Keith walks all the time? Maybe he's immune to green slime. You know, was the NPC source reliable? What else were they wrong about? It's not a question you have to answer right there and then. Just take a note and then say, Oh, look! Kobolds are attacking! So, one cool thing about using random tables and even some random dungeons is that it removes predictability. The players can't guess what you're going to do next. And when you, you know, you're not even sure what's going to ha happen next. So, throw in that monster you don't like and, you know, steal some randomness from adventure modules and other sources too. There's plenty of free ones out there. You can just grab their tables. So just go out and harvest all that stuff. So in summary, enjoy some randomness in your dungeon. Grab some random tables and just roll with it. The Dungeon Master's Guide has great random dungeon generator and every edition going back to AD&D 1E. So guess what? You have the tools you need. Put together a random event table that includes possible monsters and you're good to go. Just don't be a slave to the dice and make sure you are their master. Uh, do you have any stories on how you changed midstream because a player tried to call you out on something that, that didn't make sense? How did you handle it? I would love to read your comments down below. Uh, the next video in the series will come out next week, or if you're watching this in the future, then there'll be a link to it down in the, the description below. Uh, thanks for watching, and catch you later. Bye! Hey, thanks for watching the video. Please give a like, share, subscribe, and hit that bell icon. Catch you next time. Bye.